Good morning. So yes, I'm one of the international speakers. As you can also tell from my accent, I'm American. So we'll be talking about the US. I'll have a global view, but expect some of my stuff to be a little bit on the US experiences I've had and what we're doing in AI. So I've done a lot of these talks. And every time I do them, I think of an analogy. And I kind of always get the analogy a little off. I speak to a team of engineers, and the end analogy is too simple. I speak to a team of high-level executives, and all right, what the hell did she say? So I sat on a plane, like I always do for lots of hours, and I thought, what analogy do we have in the world that is as ancient as anything, has been through the trials and tribulations of war and peace as well, and that can really teach us what we need to be thinking about in AI for the next three to five and maybe even 10 years? And I thought about construction. So I'll make a bold assumption that everybody here knows what it's like to build a building, whether from scratch, whether you're building your own home. If any of you have done that, I applaud you. Or whether you're a developer building a multi-billion dollar complex. The construction industry. I want to set the stage here as well. $10 trillion in revenue, 100 million employees globally, and $15 trillion by 2020. The reason I like this analogy is because that's exactly where AI is going. Many of you have either dabbled in what's today called artificial intelligence, have been in an MVP phase or a POC phase, but the next three to five years is about scale. It's about AI at the core, and it's about transforming everything we do with artificial intelligence. And it's not scary. I think someone else mentioned that earlier. This is not about the fear of AI and robots taking over the world. It's about harnessing that technology, the way we harness the power of building 175-foot skyscraper that could easily topple on our heads, by the way. So let's start the history of construction. That is on the very far uh, left, or my right, a 10-story building, the first quote-unquote skyscraper built in Chicago. It was also not long-lived. It wasn't built well. It had many fires. Uh, and uh, it was a bit of a POC in uh, building skyscrapers. It did not fare well. That very year that building collapsed, the Empire State Building was born. I'm a little proud of this one. 102 stories, and it's still alive. And then we have the Burj Khalifa, 163 stories, and still alive. There are a few things I want you to note on this uh, figure. 10 stories to 102 stories. Why haven't we gone from 102 to 200? Just like AI, eking out that extra bit of power, the more advanced we get is exponentially more difficult. And this is important to understand as we go into a scalable, technology world. We talk about tech being everywhere. We talk about digital being everywhere. It's really important to understand that as we scale, getting that extra 1 million, 2 million, 3 million is going to take some serious solutioning and brain power. Now, the AI timeline, not as old, but is moving just as fast. As many of you know, Deep Blue, Watson, and if I understand correctly, last year you had Sophia here. 
and we're gaining ground even faster. So I'll tell you a story about something I ran into in the US that, as a technology executive, even impressed myself. So I'm in San Francisco, walking around with my boyfriend, and we go to get a drink, and I walk into a Walgreens, which, if many of you know, is like a Boots or a Tesco. And I walk in, and I'm like, these fridges look oddly pristine. Everything is in the same spot. It's lit very nicely. And I walk in front of it, and it changes. The entire fridge changes in front of me. And I look at it, and I notice there is a camera looking at me, identifying my Walgreens ID, and changing the image that's being reflected of what is inside of the case with sales for myself. 1,000%. AI targeted real-time digital in retail. More importantly, that is in over 100 stores right now, working incredibly well in the US. So that's scale. We're not talking about like a Walgreens pop-up shop where they have like two Coca-Cola bottles and they're like, uh, let's see if this kind of works. So we're there. We're getting there. So the question is, how do we get there the right way and have it not fall apart on us in 10 years? Over the next part of the session, I'll land on three key areas that I really want you to remember. The first is ethics, ethics, ethics. I'm sure you have all heard of ethical AI, responsible AI. Again, using the building analogy, I'll give us a couple of tools and tricks to find out how we make sure that always stays at the forefront and is not an afterthought. Because if ethics is an afterthought in when you build your algorithm, you've already failed. Scale. Again, forethought, not an afterthought. Is, uh, I'll use an example here. I'm going to go ahead and develop a building. I'll develop the first flood, five floors or so, and then I'll decide if I wanted to make it 100 floors. Crazy, right? Because if you need to go from five floors to 100 floors, we all know the foundation needs to be bigger. The, the, you know, the proportions are different, so you basically have to start from scratch. In AI, this is not as clear, so it's very easy to say, I'm going to build the first thing and then kind of hope that we can scale from there. And the perfect team in this kind of solution has the golden ratio of builders to designers. And I'll explain what that means. So ethics. What is the number one concern we have when we build cities? Our people, their safety, their security, their privacy. Think of what you do when you build a building of apartments for people. This is their home. This is where they go after a very long day at work. Could also be where they spend many hours at work. This is where they hope there isn't a fire. It's where they keep their animals when they're away. And so we have thousands and thousands of pages of getting permits to even start to lay the groundwork on a building. Yet for AI, this does not exist today. And we are all, I will wager to say, building algorithms that are affecting every part of our lives and our homes and our privacy and our security. So I hope that we take some lessons from the many, many, many millennia of building safe cities and apply that to our AI. And this is what happens when we don't. So as many of you have heard, the US has seen some failures in recent history, as recent as a couple of months ago. United Healthcare Group is being scrutinized and currently in the process of potentially being fined for using an algorithm that has uh, disproportionately affected black patients. Apple and Goldman Sachs launched their first new credit card. They got into a very new world of retail banking, and guess what? It adversely affected women and offered them less credit. 100% of the time, due to a bias in an algorithm. Now, whose fault is it? The algorithm? The leader? The engineer? If you fire the engineers. <laughs> I mean, the math? It's all rational, right? I mean, you put data out inside, 
As we all know, we live in a society of bias. We're all human, we are going to continue to be human, and we're going to continue to be flawed. So we need to use that knowledge when assessing the good and the bad of what can happen. And this is because ethics was an afterthought that we have these two scenarios today. So hopefully we start learning from them quite quickly. Who here has watched HBO Silicon Valley? All right, if you are in tech and you have not watched this show, please do. That's, I have a, a picture up on, on there of, uh, of someone, of Guilfoyle. Uh, uh, easily figuring out how to scale something, and then obviously breaking ground. When you're a leader and you're designing an AI solution, most of the time you think in MVP and POC form, and you go, let's just get there and then figure it out. How much more time would it be to ask of your team, you know what, give me two options. Give me the POC option and give me the scale option, just in case. In design, Developers ask this of their architects every single time. Give me a building that can live in an earthquake zone. Give me a building that can live in a tornado ridden zone. Give me all the plans and then I will decide. This is the way we construct our AI, not in a reactive, quick approach. I heard someone mention the energy consumed with data centers. It's bad. I think some of us think because things live in the cloud, uh, that we're not using a lot of energy, uh, but we are, uh, more so every day. So do buildings, but again, buildings have addressed this. As many of you know, LEED certification is a very broad and proud certification that many buildings will stamp on their, on their forefront and on their door when they are LEED certified, which means they have taken into account the way that their building will affect the climate. With data centers and AI, does not exist today. Our teams, so I ask, you're a developer, you're building a building, and someone says, would you rather have a thousand architects and two builders, or a thousand builders and two architects? Same question in analytics. Lots of research, lots of great data science, Sometimes I see 20 data scientists and two engineers, and then I get a question, this is not scaling, and I go, yeah, well, your team's a little off. So very, very similar analogy. You need the right ratio and the right team to ensure that while the R&D is happening, a broader pool of people are ensuring it is built to scale, it is secure, and it's reliable. So. Ethics. We need to start coming together as a world, not as the United States, not as the EU, and not as APAC, to understand and build a group and a policy and framework that will allow us to think about the philosophical, social, and economic impact of the algorithms we are beginning to build into absolutely everything we do. Scale. It does not hurt to ask your team to give you a few different options, even if you're just dipping your toe in the AI world. Because I hope that you are all eventually planning to scale what you are building. And the perfect ratio. Today, data science is a heated and heavy term, and the role data scientists is even heavier. There are thousands of people that have the title. Make sure that when you actually build that team, whether it's the title data scientist or the title engineer or the title machine learning engineer, that that team has the right builder skill set and the right design skill set to get you where you need to go. Thank you. Andrea Carrega, thank you so much.